What's up everyone, Ryan McCullough here with another Next Generation Music Sessions video. This video is for all of you beginners, all of you brand new guitarists who want to get better quickly. In this video, I'm going to show you the most essential beginner exercise coming up next. Hey everyone, if you like this video or have liked any of our videos in the past, click the subscribe button below. We're always coming out with new content. Furthermore, check out what we're doing on social media because we have a bunch of free events that we don't want you to miss out on. So follow us on Instagram or Facebook and you can see we've got some, uh, some live events and uh, different workshops that are coming up that we want you to be a part of. Just a caveat, in this video, I'm expecting that you can play these eight chords, C, G, E, E minor, A, A minor, D, and D minor. And I have a link in the description to chord charts for those specific chords on my website so you can follow along. So just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to be using two chords for this exercise. But keep in mind, you can use any combination of these eight chords. And because you're in your beginner phase, you should let your imagination just run wild. Put together crazy combinations of chords. It's a lot of fun. So the exercise I have for you today is called the switching drill. And there are a number of variations here. But right now, if I asked you as a beginner to play a C chord for a bar and a G chord for a bar, you would have a very difficult time doing that. So here's what you can do to work on that. One of the most difficult things as a beginner guitar player is going to be to, to transition from one chord to the next. In this exercise, you're gonna need a metronome, something like this, or you know, you can be a little bit less old fashioned and you know, just use your phone, but whatever. Something that makes a clicking sound and does so in time. You are going to just count to four to start out with. I've got mine set to 72 and we've got one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Really easy. So next what you're gonna do is you're gonna play a C chord for that first count of four. You're gonna play the C chord right on beat one. And immediately afterwards, you're gonna take your fingers and you're gonna move them in position for a G chord. And you're gonna play that G chord on beat one. Now here's the catch, right now, don't worry about sustaining the C chord for all four beats. Just worry about playing the chord on beat one and then playing the G chord on beat one of the next measure, like this. Okay, and here's how you practice this. You don't sit down and do this once and call it good and say, yeah, I did this, it was really cool. You know, I made dinner, I can eat it now, it's all done. Uh, no, you have to work on this. So the way I suggest my students work on this is to do it in uh, four bar cycles. So you do it for, uh, for four bars and then you stop for a bar and then do it for another four bars and stop for a bar and, and you get the idea. So like this. Three, four. Once you can play this chord progression, just as we discussed, four times in a row without any mistakes, then you can move on to this next step, which is keep step one, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna modify how long you're sustaining the chord. So you're gonna play that C chord on beat one, and you're gonna sustain it to count two. So you play C on beat one, hold it to count two, and then move your fingers on beats three and four and do the same thing for the G chord. It'll look like this. Two, here we go. Two, shift and. Shift and. Two, shift and. Two, shift and. You're going to do the same thing you just did, but guess what? You're gonna to go to beat three, like this. Three, shift, two, three, shift, shift, shift. 
So I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, you're gonna hold the chords to beat four. No, that's ridiculous. Why would you do that? No, what you're gonna do next is what I call the jingle bell strumming pattern, like this. So to be clear, what's going on here is you play the root of the chord on beat one, and then you play the top three strings on beats two and three. You still have beat four to move your fingers to the next chord. Why do this as opposed to doing the logical next step? Well, you could do the logical next step, but I advocate doing the jingle bell strumming pattern because what you're working towards is playing syncopated strumming patterns uh, on your guitar. And most beginner guitar players revert to playing the entire guitar all the time, which is, it's kind of like being a singer and doing a death metal scream like the entire song. You just don't need to do it all the time. It's kind of insane. Okay, and then the final step to this exercise is building to uh, what I call the syncopated strumming pattern. You can use this for tons and tons of songs. A lot of songs use this as the basic strumming pattern. All you're really doing here is taking the, the idea of that jingle bell strumming pattern, so playing the root on beat one, um, that is the lowest note that you're playing on the guitar. Play that for beat one, and then you're gonna play down, up, up, down um, on the high strings. What that rhythm really amounts to is you not playing uh, beat three. So for each one of the quarter notes that you're playing, three, four, you can equally divide each one of those into two equal parts and they sound like this. One and two and three and four and. And when you play that syncopated strumming pattern, you're playing all of those eighth notes except for th the uh, beat three and the end of four. So what does that mean? That means whenever you play any one of the numbers, that is one, two, three, or four, you're playing a downstroke, either on the low string on beat one, the rest of the time on the high strings. So you're using a downstroke. Whenever you play on the ands, the rhythms in between the numbers, you're going to be using an upstroke. Now, you should know that this is what is going to happen every single time, and this is a hard and fast rule of playing the guitar. No, but it's a very good starting point, jumping off point, if you will, to getting into more complicated literature. So without further ado, the syncopated strumming pattern sounds like this. Here we go. And finally, if you like what you saw here today, click the subscribe button below and stay up to date on all of our newest content.